In the last video, I tried to repair a Techniques SLPG400A CD player with Philips CDM4 mechanism. Unfortunately, I was not successful. In the comments of that video, a lot of people told me to check some very specific capacitors on the servo board, as those often cause problems in these Techniques CD players. Now, it is too late to save this CD player, it has already been scrapped, but I have kept the whole entire CDM4 mechanism as a parts donor for other CD players, and that does include the servo board. So, in this video, I'm going to check those capacitors that people have pointed out in the comments to see if those would have been the problem. The entire mechanism, including the servo board, were made by Philips, which is interesting because at that time Techniques already had their own CD player mechanisms, and normally the Japanese were rather reluctant to source parts from abroad. But you can certainly tell that this was made by Philips. We even have the typical star-type security screws. And then a normal screw right there. That doesn't make any sense. Let's take out those screws and see what we find on the component side of the board. The laser assembly connects via a ribbon cable over here, so I'm going to fold out. Actually, I'm going to unplug this motor, okay? And then I'm going to fold the board over into this direction. Yep, there is, there is the ribbon cable right there. So I'm going to unplug that like so. Here is the servo board, and I can already see there is the capacitor that people have pointed out. And these capacitors look a bit odd as well. So we'll check all of these three. All the other capacitors look just like standard regular capacitors. Here is a closer look at the component side of the servo board. It turns out these two capacitors are 8.2 nanofarads, so these are not electrolytics. These are probably foil capacitors. They will be fine. That leaves us with this capacitor, C2521, and one person in their comment actually mentioned this specific component number, and everybody else told me to check for Philips-made blue axial electrolytic capacitors. So this is the one that's suspect, and up on this end of the capacitor, I can actually see, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make that show up on camera, I can see some very, very slight signs of leakage. I clipped off the capacitor on one end to disconnect it from the rest of the circuit. I did not want to unsolder it because heating electrolytic capacitors with the soldering iron sometimes restores them and I don't want that. I want to have an accurate result on the component tester. So let's see what the component tester thinks about this. I'd say that is a pretty clear result. The capacitance should be 47 microfarads, but it's only 20 and the ESR is up at 16 ohms. This capacitor is bad. So, at last, it turns out it was not a faulty laser. It was this little capacitor that caused the fault. Well, it's too late for this CD player. Thankfully, it's not a great loss. It was in very bad condition cosmetically, with scratches on the faceplate and broken buttons. And of course, the good news is, the next time I come across a Techniques CD player with Philips CDM4 mechanism that doesn't work, 
I will know how to fix it. Before I end this video, I'd like to respond to some less helpful comments on the previous video. One suggestion that came up repeatedly was to check the adjustments on the laser assembly itself. Apparently, those adjustments are not the right ones. Well, the service manual makes no mention of any adjustments on the laser assembly itself, and if we look at this, and I have looked at it all around and from the bottom, there are no adjustments on this laser assembly. That right there is a mounting screw. That goes straight into plastic. So, uh-uh, no adjustments on the laser assembly itself. Another suggestion was to lubricate the spindle motor. Well, the spindle motor runs nice and freely. There are absolutely no problems with that. Likewise, the laser assembly moves nice and freely, about as freely as it can in the residual magnetic field of its magnetic drive. But don't get me wrong, of course, I am thankful for each and every comment that I get, and of course, it's only thanks to the comments that I found this bad capacitor. Thank you for watching.